This looks lovely. In case you wanted to remember. A successful writer of thriller novels, Mary Morrison is happily married to Tom. They have twins where she tries to give her time taking care of them while trying to reignite her passion for writing. Her publisher asks her to write another book and offers a $2 million advance payment. What, what is this? We have an offer for you. One, I think. The numbers. They make sense. She initially refuses, but when Tom says he has lost half of his income in a risky investment, Mary is forced to accept the offer of her publisher. Tom, how much? Well, nearly half, I guess. Nearly half of the reserves? Mary's friend Elaine suggests hiring a nanny while she writes her novel. She then went to an agency to make things easier for her to find the right person to take care of her twins. I must say, Mary, I think that you will be very pleased with what we can offer. Our young women come from impeccable backgrounds. After a few applicants, she hires Grace. Mary seems to notice Grace loves to read. So you read a lot? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Whenever I can. Upon knowing that Mary's a writer, Grace is filled with excitement to work for her. You're a writer? These are your books? I can't believe I'm standing in the home of an actual writer. Elaine, despite giving praises on how Grace takes care of Mary's kids, she warns Mary not to be so complacent when it comes to be so personal with Grace. And you know what they say about prudes. But Mary still tries to befriend Grace, even letting her wear few of her clothes. As Mary starts to write her novel, she has difficulty writing until she uses her blossoming friendship with Grace for inspiration. You know what I think we should do today? Play hockey. Tom asked Mary how's her writing going and gave him a preview about the topic. They invite Grace for dinner, but she humbly declined as she respects family time for Tom and Mary. This is important family time. <laughs> See you first thing in the morning? Yes, thank you so much, Grace. Grace feels overwhelmed whenever she is with Mary, and that feeling becomes something more than gratitude as Grace tries to seduce Mary while they were inside a store buying clothes for her. Mary tries to control her emotions, but whenever she sees Grace, she is taken by so much tension that it became sexual fantasies towards Grace. When Mary's publisher asks for an update, she then imagines Grace while conveying the storyline. She tells them to let her lead what the outcome of the story will be. Mary meets Elaine again during workout and still gets a warning on her friendship with Grace. She finds Tom and Grace talking and she quickly embraces Tom and kisses him as Grace went to check on the kids. Grace offered to stay longer so that the couple can go out the night. I'm not doing anything tonight. Um, if you need me to stay late, I, I can. All right. Stunning. The next day, Mary continues to write as Grace puts on lotion and the two seems to feel the tension. She asks Grace to swim with her that day, then after that, they spend the third time drinking and dancing. Mary reveals to Grace that her next novel is inspired by her, then Grace suddenly cries and tells Mary how thankful she is for the chance to work for her. Did you know that you're the reason that I wrote my writer's block? Mary fell asleep, then suddenly saw Grace doing sexual act towards her, but then she realized it was just an illusion. The two women now starts to feel sexually attracted to each other. Mary can't seem to distinguish if what she has seen nor heard is true or until she confronts Grace about what happened. To her surprise, Grace tells Mary she did not know what she is talking about. What happened the other day could never happen again. What happened? I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Mary took a night bath when Grace came and started touching her. Then she realized she was just imagining things again. Sexual fantasies towards Grace. Mary's almost finished with her novel and doesn't want to be interrupted. As she is busy writing, Elaine saw Tom with Grace at a restaurant. Grace tries to seduce Tom and Elaine wants to tell Mary on what she saw. Mary and Grace spend their time at the lake as Grace took this chance to really make Mary feel how much she likes her. And the two shared a passionate kiss. Grace, I, I think we should stop. As they went home, they saw Elaine talking to Tom. She tells Mary she needs to talk to her in private. When we can get a little bit more privacy, but just know this. I love you, and I only want what's best for you. You have to know that. Grace and Mary shares again sexual moment at the kitchen. Mary felt sick and fell asleep. Then she wakes up and saw Grace and Tom making out. She can't hardly know if what she saw is real or was just again imagining. Her emotions took over and tells Grace and Tom what she saw. You and my husband were fucking Mary. over there on the counter. Damn it. It was so real. It was Mary starts to feel suspicious towards Grace, so she calls the agency. To her surprise, the agency reveals they don't have any Grace employed as a nanny. Grace. You have a grace, right? Sorry, we don't have anybody by that name. She starts to investigate and was able to locate where Grace lives. She then knew about Grace's childhood and that she is being traumatized and have identity problems. Grace was one of the oldest. God knows whatever else they did to those kids. She came here to live with me. She went to see Elaine and was shocked to find her dead and immediately calls the police. She is so upset when the police tells her she is the main suspect as they present to her their evidence. Tom tells Mary that she is actually gone for three hours and they don't know where she was. I don't understand how I'm the main suspect. Mary, where, where, where were you last night? Mary tells Tom that Grace is dangerous and he should not let her stay inside their house. But it was too late. Grace has an alter ego named Margaret and she is trying to overcome this identity crisis. But unfortunately, she was able to hurt Tom. Mary came and tries to talk to Grace and even tells her to call 911. Grace, kill me. Grace hits her head as Mary tried to fight back. After a year, Mary still writes her novel and happily plays along with Tom and their twins. Mary came to visit Grace as she is admitted into a mental facility and still continues to look after her despite what happened. Want more queer content? Then please subscribe and hit the notification bell.